The concept of detective fiction sounds like a genre steeped in realism more than any other, but that's not necessarily true. From the dawn of the genre with Edgar Allan Poe's Killer Apes, to the Golden Age where John Dixon Carr regaled us with impossible crimes and Ellery Queen presented the most bizarre murder scenes they could imagine. Good grief, he's naked! To the dawn of the modern Japanese detective novel, Soji Shimada's wild escalation in crime complexity and Yukito Ayatsuji's quest to develop a crime scene house more bizarre than an average post in McMansion hell. To our modern era where Masahiro Imamura, Saku Aizawa, and Kia Hojo are logically incorporating actual Walking Dead into their stories. Mysteries have always provided a world where the impossible is made possible. And I can't think of any better series to demonstrate that than Kyoichi Nanatsuki's Detective Zeno and the Seven Locked Murder Rooms. <laughs> A man is found, unconscious and bloodied, by the side of the road. He awakens in the hospital with total amnesia. His first words are to accuse the doctor treating him of murder. He is correct. Feeling detached from the rest of humanity without his memories, the man, dubbed Zeno after the Latin for outsider, decides to become a consulting detective so he can discover the human motives that drive people to kill. A desire aided by the fact that the killer doctor case has made him an overnight celebrity. A rich patron agrees to pay all of Zeno's living expenses and allow him to work as a detective with one condition. Once a week, Zeno must take a client at a specific cafe. After solving the case of a baseball player murdered in the middle of a game, <laughs> Zeno uncovers that the murder was organized from the shadows by a villainous murder organizer. The organizer challenges Zeno to solve his seven locked murder rooms, saying that if he does, he can return Zeno's lost memories. Immediately after delivering this challenge, the organizer is murdered. Taking on as assistants a high school girl who moonlights as an assassin with the delightfully anime name of Ayla Dizaka and the organizer's adopted daughter Umi Kai, who suffers from a rare disease that causes her physical pain whenever she hears a lie, Zeno cracks the case, though not before the culprit is able to kill several cops in front of him, only to immediately be accosted by an ex-mercenary who demands Zeno tell him which of his former squadmates was the traitor who single-handedly wiped out the rest of his squad, threatening to kill Zeno and then himself if he fails. No sooner is that incident resolved than Zeno is called to the next crime scene before the murder itself takes place, because someone killed him in effigy at a music college, where all of the buildings are shaped like instruments, which does prove to be the actual next murder case when the school's chairman is somehow inflated to death. What I'm getting at here is that Detective Zeno is that rare beast, the Chuni mystery, a series that moves incredibly quickly and only does things as dramatically as possible. And that's delightful. While mystery stories live and die by their solid logic, this manga is a prime example of why logic and realism aren't synonyms. After all, in real life, people logic themselves into completely absurd behavior all the time. So why should we leave interesting puzzles on the table just because they're less common than shootings or domestic violence? In a vacuum, most of Detective Zeno's more over-the-top elements aren't really unique. A decent chunk of them I've seen before in Detective Conan, the murderous drug lord doing a deal in a place you wouldn't expect, the hot-headed military man forcing the detective to solve a case at gunpoint, the locked room on a moving train designed to look like an old-timey steam train. And if we consider the totality of mystery fiction, I think I've seen all of them done elsewhere. But the series' insistence on only doing anime bullshit cases back to back to back to back to back, one after another, lends the whole series a tone of madcap energy, helped along by some delightfully expressive art by Tepe Sugiyama. The manga's art is occasionally a bit loose and wiggly, but it's on a model enough and detailed where it matters in dramatic moments and when showing important evidence to make it clear that it's an intentional stylistic choice. A lot of the fundamentals of good sequential arts, eye line manipulation, scene composition, some very well staged dramatic panels, are well on display here. And you'll never get characters confused with one another with the array of different designs the book throws at you. Tsukiyama's so well-differentiated, almost caricature faces and warpingly over-the-top expressions often reminded me of something like One Piece. 
Actually, the art here reminds me uh, a lot of One Piece, come to think of it. Well, if you're gonna copy, copy from the best. Speaking of the cast, they're fun in the same sort of Chunibyo way as the plotting. Xena's status is a purely emotionless engine of logic, which is played alternatingly for comedy and horror, makes for a solid double act with Ayla, who, despite being an assassin, is defined by being bad at lying and easily flustered. She's the source of most of the monk's big potential reaction face memes. The murder organizer is a Joker style, I just give big evil speeches and then do whatever the plot needs a bad guy to do in order to advance the plot type bad guy. And his daughter... has a design that makes my heart feel funny. Of the core recurring cast, only the Inspector Lestrade archetype, Inspector Onikobe, stands out as someone who doesn't... did... stand out. And the closest things to character moments he gets are being upset that Xeno makes him feel useless, which... <laughs> Let's be real, barely even counts. And a volume-ending gag omake that's also making fun of his lack of any character outside of being a cop. Poor guy, they didn't even care enough to give him a second personality trait in his own focus episode. As a mystery story, Detective Zeno is hit or miss. The big unifying theme in most of the stories are, of course, the titular seven locked murder rooms. Now, you can tell you Tsuji's house series, Soji Shimada's murder in the Crooked House, and a whole load of other mysteries set in eccentric buildings, make it clear that it's entirely possible to make fair, solvable mysteries about tricks and traps and so on, and Nanatsuki is able to keep up with them... Uh, sometimes. While there are a few cases where it feels like the culprit is taking advantage of the architecture around them to commit legitimately clever crimes, the first chapter is actually a standout in this regard. A large chunk of the locked rooms have solutions that basically boil down to the organizer installed a James Bond tier death trap in the room and the culprit turned it on, and all you have to do is realize what the trap was, usually immediately after seeing the cause of death and then wait for the culprit to make a slip-up, because their plan was just throw a secret switch, what physical evidence are they gonna leave? It all gets a bit formulaic, even if you're more fond of you said something the culprit would be the only person to know solutions than I am. It is a credit to Nanatsuki's writing abilities that he doesn't run out of ways to spin this fairly simple concept for a mystery series in the almost 80 chapters this manga ran for, but the sheer complexity of the rooms escalates into near straight-up magic territory pretty quickly, and that does make the inherent fairness of the cases suffer. But despite my issues with this mystery story as a mystery story, I can't deny I did enjoy the time I gave over to Detective Zeno. It's a series that's just fun. Uh, showing that sometimes just coming up with creative ways to kill people can carry an entire mystery story, provided it's shared with a fun cast. And hey, at the very least I can guarantee you won't ever get bored. And that is our review. Thank you all for watching. If you liked this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and uh, I don't know, I guess you could toss a few bucks under my coffee or something. I don't have a Patreon or anything. I don't know when the next time I'll make one of these scripted mystery reviews will be. This was a lot more effort than I expected it would be when I started work, and not having that audience feedback while it was still in progress was actually surprisingly demoralizing. But just in the event that this video gets any traction, hello, my name is Mitsuda Madoi, and I am a murder mystery VTuber over on Twitch. You might notice looking at my VODs that it's been a while since I last streamed, but I think I'll be able to start up again soon with more mysteries, more RPGs, all sorts of fun experimental stuff. It'll be a blast. I hope you enjoy what I've been able to provide thus far, and have a nice rest of your day. Goodbye.